Hey, Nick back on the Get Me Off Good Video blog, just uh, shooting off a quick video because, you know, the enthusiasm is with me at the moment, so I thought I'd just try and get this out there. This is day four, uh, still the morning, but later on during the day. But let's talk about, you know, possibilities, making it happen, and so on and so forth. Just very quickly an observation. As I'm relying upon daylight now, I seem to have a thirst for it. I mean, I got up quite early this morning, not because I had like thousands of things to do, but because I've got a thirst for the daylight. It, it's like it takes about three days, maybe, for the body to adjust to moving away from artificial light, uh, which I think is fascinating, really. Hmm. But anyway, let's get on with the body of this one particular video. Uh, I've taken a few notes, thinking about this whole thing from a practical standpoint, an educational standpoint, and um, a things for the future kind of like standpoint and trying to bring it all into one big cohesive picture. But let's think about the ideal type of building. The ideal type of building I would say for uh, full and proper off-grid living would have to be, or have to have the ability to burn wood, wood pellets, wood briquettes, charcoal and coal, basically all your basic solid fuels as well as the liquid fuels I've been demonstrating such as of course wonderful bioethanol, uh, possibly even biodiesel via something like an Eberspacher uh, heater, uh, an Eberspacher heater you use on a boat for instance. And that takes marine diesel and turns that into hot air, uh, which can be quite an interesting way of doing things, especially if you've got biodiesel, which you've managed to create on land. Uh, the next thing would have to be would be very high insulation. All right, but this is where it gets difficult because it's also got to be easy to repair yourself, because people won't, you know, carry on with an, a proper off-grid lifestyle unless things are made quite, you know, easy to do. So maybe earth or wood construction, but remembering it's got to be like a severely fire resistant. Uh, also, hay bale construction is a possibility, but doing whatever you can to make it properly, you know, uh, fire resistant would of course be essential. Hay bales would already be very good insulation, but would have, you know, probably struggle on the fire resistant side of things. So you need to find a way of treating it. So to simplify matters, you need to have one story plus maybe a loft or eaves room type area. But if you do that, you'd still have to have some kind of shuttering or door to make sure the heat downstairs or the hot air downstairs stays downstairs. So it can't be thin. It's got to be quite a thick block of insulation separating the downstairs from the upstairs. So when it comes to bedtime, you remove your insulation or the hot air downstairs and go upstairs and you can then sleep in a nice, you know, warm bedroom area. Very good and controllable ventilation. Uh, ventilation is essential to reduce the likelihood of molds, for instance, and to try and keep everything nice and hygienic. Airflow is always essential for that sort of thing. That's why we have uh, trickle vents on our patio windows, for instance. That's vital. Tons of rain and water storage are written down here. Uh, we, you know, we have droughts. That's that's a bad thing. But obviously, as I've mentioned in very early videos, if you've got something like a dehumidifier and you've got electricity, you can run it all day long. That'll provide you with some water. You can't drink it. So you then have to put that through some form of uh, water purification process. And then you've got drinking water, but at least that will make the water for you. So it swings and roundabouts as to how you're going to play it, basically. And you can only do, use that solution if you've got the electricity in the first place to be able to make the whole thing work. Okay, but if you've got, like, tons of rain storage, then you'll probably be okay for the whole year, especially if we're going to get good rain. Countryside access is something I've written down here, especially if you're in like a family unit, because if you're in a family unit, going for a walk into the woods and into the countryside could be a very good thing for yourself and for, you know, members of the family. And also, you'll be able to get your free fuel that way. If you're running a wood gas stove or if you're running a twig kettle or Kelly kettle, you'll need to get your twigs. So go out regularly, get some fresh air pick up sticks and twigs, maybe get that from your land like I've done in the garden before, and then you've got some free fuel. Also for hunting. Uh, hunting is not a reliable way of getting food, but if you're using slingshot catapults, uh, 
you can carry it with you as long as you've got permission from the landowner or it's the right type of land and you know it's the right season then you can do impromptu hunt hunting which means that if you see it you can then get out your shot get out your catapult and get yourself some food then take it back home behead it cut off the pores skin remove the skin make sure you've thumbed it clean out the bladder and then remove the, uh, the digestive system, lungs, and all the rest. And then you've got your nice bit of healthy meat, which can be added to your stews and everything else. Still work involved, but on the other hand, reduces some of the cost. Many acres, ideally, for growing space. Uh, well, that will be impossible for most people, but you can get involved in some kind of cooperation. I've written down the word cooperation here because I think that's really important. Rotary cultivate as much land as you can and try and Im implement something akin to the three field system. Uh, I've written down here off grid cooperation, which means building business relationships with people around you. Now, trying to have a land based space station type thing is an ideal goal for so many people, including myself. It will be wonderful. But no man is an island. If you've got some skills and the person down the road needs them, then you've got something to trade with. And that means that your ability to have a better quality of life can also improve as well. So let's say someone says, we need electricity. Nick, I know you can make a solar panel. Can you help us or indeed teach us how to do it so that we can then do it for other people? And then we can get, let's say, the whole valley or village uh, with more electricity so we can all survive with bill reduction or uh, more off-grid or grid in, uh, independence. So, cooperation is good. I've written down things like farmer's market, skill trading. Uh, if you're growing something and there's someone down the road who's hungry, you can feed them. They can then do some work for yourself. So, bartering and trading in an off-grid type community or through a transition community would be essential in the future. But for the most part, I'm focusing on trying to get like self-sufficiency for the individual and for the group and also to remove the possibility or strongly reduce the possibility of fuel poverty. That's why I've taught you people about using retention cooking, uh, using the dirt cheap method of a vacuum flask. Mine costs £3.99 from B&M. Okay? If you've got a B&M near you, use it. If you can't get to a B&M, go to a Go Outdoors, which is a camping shop, and they may, might have also uh, you know, the wide neck vacuum flasks. They definitely have bottles of gas for a briefcase type stove like the one that I've been demonstrating for um, between four and five pound. Okay, so there is cheap ways of using off-grid technology already for you out there if you know where to look. Alright. Few ornamental plants. Okay, so you want to attract the pollinators but you don't want to waste space with pretty little flowers. If you're going to grow something that looks pretty, try and make sure it's useful. Uh, but also you need good hedgerows or bug banks to make sure that you get the good bugs, sorry, the good bugs which will attack the bad bugs and keep your off-grid lifestyle capable of producing a better harvest. Right, next would be a medicinal and culinary herb garden. Culinary is essential because you need a variety of flavors. You need something which tastes good, especially people who are older. If there's older people in your family, they will need to have stronger flavors because the taste buds start to go. Uh, and you yourself will want to have something just to make it, you know, taste good and feel good. Now, the reason I'm mentioning all these things is because these are things which appear to be pretty essential or important for off-grid living and I've been thinking about this quite hard because I'm doing it and that's been getting the cogwheels going. Right, massive solar, thermal and thermal storage, so generation of heat because at the moment no need to worry, heating's like not turned on, the only real heating I need is a bit of a jump if I'm feeling cold, that's all, uh, and it's not really necessary because we're in June stroke July it's warm. Don't need it at night, don't need it during the day. But earlier on in the year I was using other forms of heating, okay? And later on in the year I will be as well. So heat is a big concern. 
maximize sunlight usage. This has been like one of my more recent contemplations. If you rely upon daylight because you're not relying upon artificial light, your body and brain adjusts and it has to adjust. So solar tubes or a total internal reflection system would also be ideal because then that means you can pump plenty of fresh sunlight into the building and your need, because I think it is a need for, for lights to keep yourself sane and awake and healthy, uh, will basically be there for you. And of course in the winter to keep away seasonal affective disorder because you'll be indoors and it'll be cold and it'll be dark, All right, you still need to have LED artificial sunlight in the winter. All right, those things are you know ideal things to head for. Obviously, in the in the short term, there's things such as the car shower I've mentioned, which I want to get 12 volt shower so I can then boil up some water, shove the you know pump end into that, then turn it on, have a hot shower, which will make life more convenient. Uh, obviously, I'm going to get myself a better washing horse, uh, caravan washing machine, uh, kelly kettles, and more in the way of wind up illumination and entertainment and the possibility of getting either an iBook, iPad, Chromebook or similar to reduce the quantity of electricity use when I'm working. Uh, but there's there's a lot to think about. I mean your daily life has to change at the moment. Uh, you don't have you probably don't have an off-grid daily life. So you get up, you get washed, dressed, breakfasted, um, you go out to work, have lunch at work, do your second half of work, then you come back, you have dinner, and basically everything is being provided at great expense. Uh, but you could change the way you do things, like, or even, even if you were to use like a slow cooker, that would help. I mean, they're, they're relatively low power. You can prepare your meal at breakfast time, and it'll be ready for you when you get back, stuff like that. Uh, if you're doing off-grid, you need time for gardening and horticulture, maintenance of what you've already got, self-maintenance, which means, uh, you know, housework, keeping yourself clean, healthy, diet, nutrition, exercise, sleep, all that kind of stuff, and also having the mental room for flexibility, so you can put in a bit of extra work when you need to, and then slack at other times, and try and balance all of your tasks. It's, um, it's a fascinating way of thinking, and I think it's going to be a very, very good and interesting way of life. So I'm getting more and more interested in different possibilities as to how this could actually happen. And also, with, with help of you people out there, it will be good to just try and give people directly the hands-on uh, education and inspiration that's required to, to achieve you know, the, the wonders of off-grid status for themselves or at least to progress towards it, or indeed to have less grid dependence and therefore to save money and elevate people out of fuel poverty.